Welcome back everyone, and yes, as you can see, the Wookiee family is taking shape on screen. If you want to become a member of the Wookiee family and get your own personal emoji on the stream for everyone to see, you're going to have to hang on for the stream and find out how you can get your lovely looking mug, like Just Be Happy, the Wookiee, and First Paranormal. Dude, that's the best emoji I've seen yet. You can have your face on screen right here. Yes, why? Because we roll differently at KBS. And today, I'm going to bring you news of just how many species of alien is out there that looks even weirder than those three guys. I'm only joking, boys. I'm only joking. But welcome back, ladies and gents. Yes. Another pre-show stream awaits us. My um, safety zone sign is very much out of kilter. How are we all doing? You had a good weekend? Uh, I certainly have. Had some really good streams over the weekend. You know, we had um, Scotty, we took our deep dive down the Scottish rabbit hole. And then we ended up going over to the Midwest for some mysteries as well. Real good fun with that. Real deep show with Bill Bean last night. Wow. I love it when he gets into one of these topics and Bill is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to some of these bigger cases that have happened over the years and its connections into the kind of stuff, the world, that Bill usually talks about. So that's over on Bill Bean's YouTube channel and you can find that Bill Bean, just search it here on YouTube and it comes up real easy and you can find all of the episodes that I've done with Bill and a whole lot more as well because it goes over some of the TV shows that he's been in, some of his life story, and I really, really want to see Bill's channel taking off as well. And of course, first Paranormal, who we've seen on the screen there, he was on Freaky Friday with us. Big round of applause, brother. You are knocking it out of the park, as is Spooky Andy. But that whole owl man thing that you brought up, dang, dude, good stuff. And uh, remember to subscribe to Jason's channel as well. Now, hopefully I'll get a chance to go and take a look at both those channels before we go away today. But I want to get into a really interesting study that just came out. It's a really good kind of conversation for us to have before I join up with Ben Emlyn Jones for today's special show over on Truth Frequency Radio. It's the Kev Baker Show proper, and today it's called It's Another End of the World, again, and I can't take it anymore. So Bill, not Bill, Ben this time. Bill and Ben, not the flower pot men. Two absolutely gloriously brilliant individuals in their own right. How would I never put that one together before? Bill and Ben, the flower pot men. Famous cartoon, that. But anyway, I digress. And um, we'll be getting Ben's thoughts on the story I'm about to get into. He's also going to be talking about the movie Network with Howard Beale back in the day. You know, um, that famous scene, I'm mad and I can't take it anymore. He's going to be um, talking about that. He's also going to be talking about another end of the world date and a whole lot more as well. Really like hanging with Ben. So that will be on the main Kev Baker show today on TFRlive.com. And a big shout out to all of you filtering in here. Little Glob in the chat room. Um... Just a quickie on that, Little Glob is, I discovered, a medium, a psychic, and I had hoped to get her on air to give me an on-air reading. She's a bit too shy for that, and I'm assuming it's a she in this day and age. That can be dangerous, but we'll go there, right? And then what's going to happen instead is they are going to send me the reading that they get, the, the energies, the feelings that they pick up from yours truly. And I'm going to go over it on a show. We'll do it here on a stream. I think it'll make for a nice pre-show stream, don't you think? And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Little Glob. And Jason, great to see you back over there on Twitter, brother. Rolling your sleeves up, laughing out loud. Yes, Clown World. Oh, it's everywhere, man. It is. But ZX81? Yes, it could have ended yesterday. It probably ends every day, ZX, and we don't notice it. We've got Connie over there. Um, Robin. Algo is in the chat room. Who else we got uh, scrolling on up here? 
We've got Robin, Sean Stradamus. Very nice to see you. Baby Yoda, the cutest character in any sci-fi show in many the year. Yes, weapon, exactly. 36. That's the answer. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Um, now, I've got Super Chat coming in here, so I really need to make sure really quickly that the alert box is on. It's on! Awesome. So we'll get that when it comes up in a, a little moment. I think it's Jason. Thank you, Jason. Uh, scrolling on up. Scrolling on up. I need, a, I need a song for that. Hey! Spooky Andy. I could, if you guys wanted, ask Kevin we can figure something out. What's that for? I must have missed something. Uh, I watched you cut the stone video and figured you'd replicate more ancient woo. That'd be awesome. That'd be a great idea. We could um, almost pull you in from the workshop, Andy. I'm, I'm up for a bit of that. Membership, that's it. Man shrugging, PPP. Oh, brother. Thank you. And of course, we haven't switched on the members on this channel. And I, I've explained it ad nauseum. But um, if we don't get our memberships back in a couple of months, and this isn't me threatening YouTube. I'm just saying what's going to happen. If we don't get our memberships back, it would be unfortunate. But it's a click of a button away here. And the reason I haven't done it is just in case that Sod's Law, I turn it on here, it comes back on on the main channel, and then people are paying for two memberships to two different channels. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be that character. There's enough LARPing to go around as it is without me adding to it. Queen Goddess probably shouted you out, but uh, awesome to see you. Billy Joe, good to see you, Billy Joe. And are you having Skinwalker? Um, withdrawal symptoms because I know I am and that fly that was here when I was on air with Bill last night we're going to call it the on air fly I was sat here for a few hours today no problems and now it's back it's back and I ain't no Miyagi I ain't catching no flies with chopsticks around here doing my bloody nothing but uh, scrolling on up do 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 Brian good to see you very good AJ hey 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 to you too Jose, Ramon, Francis, yes. And uh, Little Glob was cracking a joke. There's two aliens chatting to each other in space. One says, the dominant life forms on Earth have developed satellite-based nuclear weapons. And the second alien asks, are they emerging intel intelligence? And the first alien answers, nope, I don't think so. They have them pointed at themselves. And what a perfect segue into what I want to talk to you about today. It wasn't that long ago that we were on the channel right here. And if we cast our mind back, we were talking about the Fermi paradox not so long ago. If I take a look here, it should be on here somewhere. He says, hopefully. Um, I'm pretty sure we were talking about it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Fermi. There we go. It was six days ago. Only six days ago we were talking about the Fermi paradox and they had updated it. They were coming up with new stuff. And this t story today, I think it's quite significant. Now, one study is just one study and exactly the same data could probably be interpreted an entirely different way by another set of scientists. But research sheds new light on intelligent life existing across the galaxy. Now, it's not the universe. It's our galaxy here, the Milky Way. One of bajillions of galaxies out there. And it goes on to say this. One of the biggest and longest standing questions in the history of human thought is whether there are ter other intelligent life forms within our universe. Obtaining good estimates and the number of possible extraterrestrial civilizations has, however, been very challenging. And a new study led by the University of Nottingham and published today in the Astrophysical Journal has taken a new approach to this problem. Using the assumption that intelligent life forms on other planets in a similar way as it does on Earth. Researchers have obtained an estimate 
for the number of intelligent communicating civilizations within our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And they calculate that there could be over 30 active communicating intelligent civilizations in our home galaxy. It goes on to say that the professor of astrophysics at the University of Nottingham, Christopher Consolice, who led the research, explains there should be at least a few dozen active civilizations in our galaxy under the assumption, all based on the assumption that it takes 5 billion years for intelligent life to form on other planets, as on Earth. Now, Consul, uh, Consolice, I think that's how you say it, also explains that the idea is looking at evolution, but on a cosmic scale. And we call this calculation the Astrobiological Copernican Limit. And first author, Tom Westby, explains that the classic method for estimating the number of intelligent civilizations relies on making guesses of values relating to life, whereby opinions about such matters vary quite substantially. And our new study simplifies these assumptions using new data and giving us a solid estimate of the number of civilizations in our galaxy. You getting ready, folks? We're getting closer to it. Here we go. Big aha moment. The two astrobiological Copernican limits are, the intellig are that intelligent life forms in less than 5 billion years or after about 5 billion years, similar to on Earth, where a communicating civilization formed after 4.5 billion years. Now, in the strong criteria whereby a metal content equal to that of the sun is needed, it's got in brackets, the sun is, relatively speaking, quite metal rich, we calculate that there should be around... 36 active civilizations in our galaxy. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? And of course, remember, this is all based on this very um, narrow assumption that life has to form exactly the way it did here in exactly the same amount of time. It could be far more than that when you start to open your mind to the possibility and the probability that life can take many shapes and forms. There could even be intelligent life seeded onto other planets by more advanced civilizations out there. Something that really kind of um, always plays about in my mind when we get into these topics. Do I know how we got here? Obviously not. Do any of us know? In reality, no, we, no, they don't. Many people will tell you. And do we know how many civilizations are really out there? Of course we don't. Some might know of a couple, you know, secret space programs. I'm not talking about blue chickens, but more down to earth here, breakaway civilizations that have technologies and information way beyond anything we get access to. So I don't know. I keep an open mind, but I like this. The answer to the question is 36. That's how many other aliens could be batting around in our galaxy. Just one galaxy. So we come back here, and it says that the research shows that the number of civilizations depends strongly on how long they are actively sending out signals of their existence into space, such as radio transmissions from satellites and television. If other technolo technological civilizations last as long as ours, which is currently 100 years old, then there will be about 36 ongoing intelligent technical civilizations throughout our galaxy. And that there, folks, that there is pretty mind-boggling. I'm going to leave you to think about that. I need to go and do something, and then we'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere.
Okay, okay, I'm back, folks. I'm back. Don't panic. Don't panic. There we go. Just had to sort some uh, real world stuff out there. You can see Anne getting ready to go to the shop in the background. But yes, I'm back. 36. That's how many other alien civilizations could be out there in our galaxy. F. F. Algo. You aggregate the best wound, we love you. Oh, Algo, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, did we get the other super chat that we were talking about? We did, we did. It was the membership one. Thank you, Algo. Thank you, Jason. And if anyone does feel that, you know, they think they want to support the stream, and uh, that's very, very humbling indeed. It's truly appreciated. Love the super chats. There's also a PayPal link below. So if anyone is uh, feeling very generous, then you know where to go. But I don't come here to sit and talk about that. I'll tell you one thing I do want to show you quickly before we get back into the stream, though. Give me two seconds, right? There we go, there we go, look, there we go. Check this out, check this out. Look at that. Piles of stickers, and they're like transferable. You can put them on clothing, surfaces, whatever you choose. Now, most YouTubers would say, you can get these for the paltry sum of. I'm not selling them. It's thanks to somebody called Solitech. He lives just up the road from me, actually, a far nicer part of uh, Glasgow. But he's getting into the print business, and he sent me through batteries. So, um, he says, here you go, mate, Stevie Wu. But what I'm going to do is, for people in Discord, if you want, and I appreciate everyone's privacy, all, all, obviously, but if you want, you can drop an... In Discord, your address, and um, Anne is kindly going to email a couple of those out to the first, <coughs> excuse me, the first 10 or so people that come along, they'll be able to get their hands on some of them. So, thank you, Solitech, and um, no, I'm not selling them, I'm not wanting money off you for them. And I'm uh, obviously when Solitech gets more t-shirts and things like that, we'll go and take a look at what he's got. And uh, we're all kind of the same here, folks. I'm not the guy who's going to start pumping heaps of merch at you. I've had offers to do that over the years. I know some of you would love it. Absolutely love it. But at the end of the day, I want it to remain about the info. I want it to remain and keep it good fun. I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm making content just because I've got one eye on merch I need to push and things like that. That ain't how I roll, okay? So I'm going to take a quick drink of coffee, clear the throat, then we'll get back into the aliens. We've got some other woo to look at. And then we all shift over to tfrlive.com. Or if you're in Discord, I will have a TFR live stream room open and I'll be pumping in the audio clean right into Discord. There you go. You see, I've got all of you covered here. I really do. So I'll be back in a little moment, folks. Absolutely fantastic from Solitech. Absolutely fantastic from all of you. And again, if you want to become one of the, the emojis in the family there, look at that crazy little family. It's taking shape. I hope to eventually get all of you in there. We'll have a screen where it's all just the family. You'll have your own um, little emojis. And I don't know, it's different. It's cool. And when just a guy, and I haven't set it up yet, but first paranormal, when he does the super chat, so I'll hopefully be able to bring that up on the screen when the super chat comes in. And uh, it's all fun, right? There's serious stuff going on in the world, and you know that we get into that. But I like to keep over here for the light stuff, the woo, the stuff that brought us together in the first place.
go, yes. Drink a coffee has been very much appreciated. The throat is back to normal now. I'm not going to cough my guts up. Bang. That was good. But um, yeah, let's go back over to this article. There's only maybe one or two paragraphs to go. But I like this study. You know, um, I get it. It's very limited in its scope and its range. And it's just one study. And who on Earth's name knows how many alien civilizations are out there, right? I like it. It's cool. It's something good to kind of uh, come together over, chill out, and get ready for Big Ben. And talking to Big Ben, he just messaged me there over on Skype. So I'm going to send him the link to this. Just on here. Warming up the awesome Wookiees. There you go. So then, yeah, Ben will be along tonight and we'll get back into this little article here. Just finish this up and I'll be getting Ben's thoughts on this as well as somebody who has authored three books on disclosure and um, has also looked into the whole question of are we alone, the aliens, and in particular the work of SETI over the years, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Really good to see what Ben has got to say about this. And it goes on to say that the research shows that the number of civilizations depends strongly on how long they are actively sending out signals of their existence into space, such as radio transmissions from satellites or television. If, if other technological civilizations last as long as ours, which is currently 100 years old, I think that, in cosmic terms, a hundred years? It's not even the blink of an eye. It's not even the, the Planck scale, most minimum movement of an eyelid in cosmic terms, how long we've been technologically advanced, at least this time round, at least on this part of the cycle, right? And it says, um, then there will be about 36 ongoing intelligent technical civilizations throughout our galaxy. However, the average distance to these civilizations would be, and here's the kicker, <laughs> and here's a problem by our standard model of physics, it'd be 17,000 light years away. And to make that even simpler, if we were to sit upon a spaceship going at just about the speed of light, and it would take us 17,000 years to get there. Good news, though. The other day, they did manage to successfully suspend animation within a mouse. Yes, they did. Now, I'm not too sure if they managed to bring it back yet, if they thawed it out. But we're getting there. So maybe 17,000 years, maybe it is doable. You know, just put us on ice for 17 millennia. It's okay. When we wake up, it'll be like we've only been away for five minutes. That sounds familiar from some of the stories on YouTube, just saying. But um, when we get there, you know, who even knows if that other civilization would still be there at the other end? If they're anything like us, 17,000 years, we're almost wiping ourselves out, and it's only, we're 100 years into our technology. So, um, yeah, good luck with that one. Good luck. But it says here, um, 17,000 it is also possibly the, that we are the only civilization within our galaxy, unless the survival times of civilizations like our own are long. And the professor concludes, because I can't say his name, our new research suggests that searches for extraterrestrial intelligent civilizations not only reveals the existence of how life forms, but also gives us clues for how long our own civilization will last. If we find that intelligent life is common, then we would reveal then this would reveal that our civilization could exist for much longer than a few hundred years. Alternatively, if we find that there are no active civilizations in our galaxy, it's a bad sign for our own long term existence. And by searching for extraterrestrial intelligent life, even if we find nothing, we are discovering our own future and fate.
That we are, ladies and gentlemen. That we are. But 36 is the, 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 the accepted number now from one study. We'll take that study. I'm going to play with 36. No longer will I have anyone telling me, oh, Kev Baker, you're mad. There's no aliens out there. There's at least 36 different types. Many types uh, of Heinz, was there? Many varieties of Heinz? Yeah, it's almost like there's varieties of Heinz out there. But um, no, me personally, whether it's in this galaxy or one of the other galaxies, I think it would be almost ridiculous in my mind to find that we're the only game in town, so to speak. I think there will be various life forms out there. I don't think it's a case of us discovering them. In fact, I think that whole term, the search for whether it even exists or not, is almost comical. Why is it comical? Because I think there's more than enough evidence to make a substantial case that we, as the human race, a species, of knowing about aliens and have had contact with them and at times had direct interaction, influence, and even witnessed wars overhead in our own skies in the heavens above. So it is kind of ridiculous when you hear that, you know, we're getting closer to discovering whether we're alone or not. You don't need to look outwards. I think you only have to look at our own very, very pieced together, fragmented history. And if you take the dates out of it and just look at the evidence, because the dates, who knows with some of the dating on things, okay? But if you just take the the actual incidents, like you take the, the, the dinosaur part, right, there was a dinosaur part. Let's not put numbers on it. We just know we've got evidence for that. And I think over the years, we've probably talked about enough evidence for... Like I say, not to prove anything, not to prove it, but to make a substantial case for alien visitation. Did they play about with our DNA? It seems we've been going a lot down that kind of track recently. And, and that doesn't mean that that's exactly what we're focusing in on. Because here on the show, I'll take a 360 view of pretty much all topics. I'll play devil's advocate, I'll look at it from the deep conspiracy side, and I'll try my best to go in the middle and do logic as well. And we, we, we often find ourselves going on rabbit holes and it spins off into other things, and I think that's part of the fun. It really is. And I think this is just another piece of information, another dot that we can add onto our collection of dots that we're amassing as we keep on uncovering all of these cool and crazy stories, right? And they are cool, and they are crazy. And uh, when you think about all the shows we've done in the past on here, on this kind of topic as well, we've had people come on and talk about their direct experiences communicating with aliens. And I'm not asking you to automatically just accept everything that anyone that comes on the show says, but to keep an open mind and to put it all together. And I think over time, the witnesses... People that have seen unidentified somethings in the sky. I'm pretty sure most will have down-to-earth explanations if we knew what it was. It doesn't rule out the fact that some of what people are seeing are coming from other worlds. And are they coming from other worlds to ours via another dimension as a means of travel? Or is their world literally in another dimension? Uh, I don't know if we can, you know, maybe that's the way that we can do that. Maybe if we find a way to traverse the many worlds, the different bubbles that are out there. Maybe that, maybe somehow that way we can overcome things like 17,000 light years to the nearest potential, just potential for a, a bit of life going on. But we've had an exoplanet recently, 4,000 light years away, <laughs> a bit closer. Not quite the journey. We can cut it down by two-thirds almost. But um, yeah, and they say that that's really, really promising from the point of view that it looks like Earth, i.e. in the Goldilocks zone. It's a lot closer to the, the star in that case, but the star is a lot less intense. So 
does that harbor life? Does it just naturally spring up when a planet reach a, reaches a certain size or criteria? But once it's got X, Y, Z, bingo, life emerges. Is there a quantum field of life? What does that even mean? Well, what I mean is any planet that ends up having some of the, the chemicals, some of whatever it needs for that to happen, does life then, it's a field, it's waiting to find any potentials where that happens and boof, it emerges there. So life's all waiting, it's all encoded somewhere, it just needs to find building blocks to almost express itself the way we sometimes say that our thoughts aren't always our own. We talk about people making books and coming up with the same book at the same time or inventing the same thing at the same time. The Akashic Records, we get information from there. Whoa, I got a fright there. Another, Another oh, contribution oh. to the Haggis Fund. Hey, thank you, brother. The Haggis Fund is always appreciative. But yeah, I was getting all kind of weird and deep and meaningful there. A field of life. Yes, just an information field, all encoded, ready to imprint itself on amino acids whenever they should spring into existence. I don't know. There's a big part of me thinks we're all in a bloody simulation. It's like a theme park like Westworld as well, so who honestly knows? I don't know anymore at this point. But we're going to take a little quick look back in time. It's the same website, actually. I'm quite um, quite impressed with this website. It's called Eureka Alert. That's E-U-R or E-U-R E K A L E R T dot org. I'm going to post that in the chat room. But um, we talk about aliens on here, obviously, just been talking about them. We've had uh, Mr. Ike on the show. Still can't believe that awesomeness. And we didn't get into the whole reptilian thing. But what if I was to tell you that we've now got evidence for reptilians walking about on this planet on two feet in the ancient past. Hmm? Hmm? Would you be interested in diving in to some of that? Well, take our butchers at this bad boy. <sighs> Holy smoke. Yeah, it's not exactly the reptilians. I know, I know, I almost faked news you into this headline there. Come on, let, let's stretch the imagination a little bit. Ancient crocodiles walked on two legs. Yes, indeed. Now, we touched before on the big crocodiles and stuff like that out of um, Australia. But we had the big kangaroos as well. But this here, I, I just found this today on this website. And I don't know, there's something kind of weird and wooful about reptilians walking about on two legs. It says an international research team has been stunned to discover that some species of ancient crocodiles walked on their hind legs like dinosaurs and measured over three meters in length. No, they weren't the Chittahuri. So, University of Queensland paleontologist Dr. Anthony Romilio said that the researchers first thought the similar shaped fossil footprints were from an ancient animal known as the Pterosaurus. Yes. At one site, the footprints were initially thought to be made by a giant bipedal pterosaur walking on the mudflat. But now we understand what these bipedal crocodile footprints are. I changed what it said there. But um, I was going to see if there was any of the crocodile footprints. But yeah, again, anyone laughs at you when you talk about reptilians? Just wait. Well, hang on a minute. There was reptilians once walking this earth on two feet. You can quietly say after that it was crocodiles. But it doesn't matter about that, okay? I also point to Buckingham Palace, if you ever want evidence of uh, reptilians walking on two feet. And you don't need to go back to ancient Australia for them. No, you don't. Eh, eh, eh. So then what's happening in the chat room out there? Jimmy Jeans is in there. Yes, indeed. Oh, Rick! Trade a single malt with Alien Race for a light year a nip. Oh, Rick. Now, people are wondering why Rick got the zombie emoji coming up there. It's not because I think Rick's any zombie. Not at all. Because Rick went through the Streamlabs link 
in the actual description and that goes straight to paypal that's my phone has alerted me rick you don't know how timely that is my brother but yeah jimmy's kicking about in there he's uh i think he's talking about the end of the world another end of the world date and we'll be covering it again on the day after it passes and uh, that'll be with ben and ben emlin jones for any of these you all know ben but he's got this website over here and there it is look Will the world end on Sunday? The end is near. Big Ben's going to take us into that. And he's been Zuckerberged. Or as he calls it, he's been z Yes, I have to put the bleeper on there because there's a fine line between z and f You see what I'm saying? It, algorithms. Me. Don't know if it'll discern that one or not. I always like hanging out with Ben. He's uh, into the same topics I'm into. First heard him on a show on TFR. And when I heard him, I thought, I need to get in touch with that guy. He, he knows his woo. Eventually met Ben in Glasgow, and he's even nicer than he appears on the surface when you see him on the show or you hear him on the show. Just an all-round great guy. Um, His motives are very pure. He's all about the woo. He's all about the info. And, uh, man... If you think I work a lot doing this kind of stuff, compared to Ben, not really. Ben travels here, there, everywhere. And he's into Project Blue Book. Any of you into that? I'll be asking him about the season three that's coming up. And um, what else we got? But, now, this was unfortunate news. David D's passing. Now, David D's done some really controversial, but hard-hitting political-style art. Over the years, I've used it on my streams. I've used it for thumbnails. And uh, unfortunately, I'd found out today that he passed away a couple of weeks ago. So a big shout out to David Dees. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. And um, I'll be going over to TFR Live in just a moment to get Ben. We'll be starting in 26 minutes from now. We'll be getting into a whole host of good stuff. There'll be a whole lot more that Ben will bring to the table as well as we get into the Ben X-Files, as I often call these shows that we do with Ben. I don't know, it just strikes me if there was like a, a British version of Mulder and Scully. I think you would do a lot worse than cast Big Ben in the role of Mulder. I tell you that, he, he is seeking it like Mulder. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think we're all here seeking it like Mulder. Maybe that should be a good slogan for a t-shirt. But I don't sell merch, remember? All right, folks, I'm going to have to get out of here. I need to get wrapped up. But there's 36. There's 36 different aliens out there. And none of them are coming here. And why is that? Why is it if there's all these 36 other civilizations, despite the 17,000 light year average distance to get to the nearest one why aren't they here well i did find one website today and it was weird how i came across this because i just went looking for news about aliens and it answered the question i just asked here is the answer to why the aliens haven't come and it's almost like a bit of a paradox it's a catch-22 because in that article we were reading, we were talking about technologically advanced aliens, okay? And one of the ways we would detect them is by their leakage of electromagnetic frequencies, i.e. radio, TV, satellite, that kind of thing. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. The minute they detect that from us, they won't be coming anywhere near us. Because unbeknown to me, and I'm thinking probably unbeknown to many of you, there's a very valid reason why these aliens ain't coming here, boys and girls. And it goes a little something like this. Space aliens are no longer visiting Earth due to an allergy to our cell phones. Yes, indeed. And I will leave you to ponder life, aliens, and the universe on that note. And I'll be back real soon on the Kev Baker show proper. And I'm smiling, look at Wookie. Just be happy. And first paranormal, do you want to be on the intro and exit 
cutscenes for the KBS stream, then get your emoji to me over at Discord. And if for no other reason, just come to Discord and hang out with people like me 24-7. And you too can realise that madness doesn't need to be a, a bad thing. Not if it's shared by many. So until next time, keep your mind open. Keep looking for the woo, Whoa. but not to the point where your brain turns to black goo.